I'm glad you could join me today. Today, I think we'll really do a fantastic little painting that'll it'll bring a lot of good thoughts and right to your heart here. So, I've already covered the canvas with a thin, even coat of the liquid white. It's wet, slick, ready to go. And we'll have them graphically run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with me. And we'll get started. And I'm going to take right off today. I'm going to get right in here to some this midnight black, a little bit of thalo blue. And I'm just going to mix these on the brush. Just tap them right into your brush. All right, let's go up here. Now, I want to just, just sort of dance in a little, little sky, a little happy sky, using little crisscrosses. Just let it bounce around and play. Leave some holes in the sky. Don't, don't kill it all. Don't kill it all. Let some little things just shine through. Like so. Just have fun with it. Enjoy. There we go. Now, while I got this brush dirty, I'm gonna go right into a small amount of phthalo green. Add it right onto the same old dirty brush. And load it the same way. Just tap, okay? Now, let's put in what will eventually be water. Pull from the outside in, from the outside in. See, over here, pull from this direction. I'm gonna leave a little area open here. I want it to look like a sheen of light coming across the water when this painting's finished. There we go, just right across. Okay, now let me wash this brush. A little odorless paint thinner, scrub it off, give it a little shake. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. Okay, now with a clean brush, I'm going up in here and I'm just gonna blend this guy together a little bit. I don't wanna blend it so much that I kill all the little actions in it. I wanna keep some of those in there. If you over blend it, it'll just turn into a, a flat old dead blue sky. There we go. Just blend it right on down. And for the part that's gonna be water, very lightly go across. That light area will remain right there where you where you put it. See? Already it looks like the light shining across here. And you hadn't done a thing. This is really the lazy man's way to paint. That's why I like it so much. Alrighty. I'm gonna clean that brush one more time. Shake it off. <laughs> These cameramen hate me. All right, right into some titanium white and a little bit of the red. There we go. Pull that brush in one direction. Load a lot of paint into the bristles. Let's go up here. Now, I wanna put a happy little cloud. And I'm just gonna take this brush and just dance it around. Just let it have fun. You have areas in the sky where the paint's thick, areas where it's very thin, areas where there's absolutely no paint. Keep it moving, keep it moving. Keep it moving. Otherwise, if you stay in one place, it'll look like <laughs> look like a big cotton ball laying up there in the sky. And that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for happy little clouds that just float around and have fun. Now I'm gonna take a clean, dry brush, same brush, very gently blend the bottom of this out. Just just blend it, just blend it. I'm not touching this top area at all, just the bottom. Sorta, of mix it up, mix it up. That's a good way of thinking of it. Just mix it. Just like you, you're beating up a cake batter here, just mix it up, okay? And that just takes off the excess paint. Then I'm gonna fluff it, grab it, lift it, fluff it, drag out all those little stringy things, let them happen. Mm. When all these little things happen, don't worry about them. Because when you blend this guy, they'll all go away. Look at here. It just brings it all together. And it's one of the simplest, nicest, easiest ways of making a beautiful little sky. It has all kinds of happy little clouds floating in it. Okay. Now then, I think today we'll, let's do, let's do an almighty mountain. I'm going to take a little bit of this blue and black, add a little white to it. So it makes sort of a blue-gray color. There we go, like that. Cut off a little bit, right up here. I'm gonna have a little hill this far away. So all you do, drop in a basic shape, take a dirty brush, and I'm gonna grab it. Doesn't matter if the brush is dirty or clean. And just by using brush strokes, I'm gonna put the indication of highlights and shadows in this. I want this to be very soft, and very quiet, Far, far away. Look at there, you can blend over the entire thing. Very light, very light. See, it looks like his little top went right up in the clouds there. And then maybe in front of that one, maybe there's a big, strong cloud, or a big, strong mountain, I mean. 
So let's go back, we'll use some black, a little touch of the blue, put a little Van Dyke brown in there too. Just mix it up. Pull it out, cut across it, get that little roll of paint right out on the edge, okay? Now, decide where your mountain lives. Maybe, yep, he lives right there. With this dark color, he certainly does now. And he comes down like that. And all you're looking for here is a very basic shape. We're not looking for a lot of detail yet. Push, get mean with it, get tough with it. This is where you take out all your hostilities. Really push that paint right into the fabric. Canvas is tough. We make tents out of it. There, really push it. Okay. Now, we'll take a big brush and we pull that down, just gently, just like we did the one in the background. This removes excess paint, makes the next layer of paint stick much easier. The less paint you have on this part, the easier you'll find it. Maybe out here we'll just tap it a little bit, just let it disappear. Look at that. Just sort of floats there in the sky right now. And that gives you a basic shape. If you don't like your shape, if you're not happy with it when you get to that point, you can change it. Because this is your world. Clean the old brush, and we're in business. All right, now let's put some happy little things up here. I'm going to go into a little bit of the dark sienna, a little Van Dyke brown, a little white. Just mix it all together. Put a little bit of the bright red in there, too. What the heck? We'll just have fun today. We'll make a happy mountain. A little more of the white. There. Got across it. Small roll of paint. Okay, let's go up here. Decide which peak is the farthest away. In my mind, it's this one. Tiniest, tiniest little bit of paint. Just a tiny little bit. Just like so. See there? Tiniest little bit of paint. Now for shadow color, I'm gonna take a little white, a little blue, some black, and mix me up a shadow color here. Put a little brown in that too. There. Give it sort of a sort of a bluish gray. And you can there, tone it to whatever degree you want it. Okay, cut across. Let's go right up here. And I'm gonna lay in just a little indication of shadow right in there, just like so. Now I want that to be farther back. So, very lightly, I'm gonna take this brush and give it a little tap. And then, very lightly, very lightly, barely, barely caressing the canvas. Follow the angles. There we go. And we'll just let this disappear right off into nothing. That's far, far away. Okay. Now then, now then, add a little bit more brown to that same color. And sometimes a little yellow ochre does wonders, but don't overmix. See, leave it, leave it like that. Cut off a little hunk. Now we can start playing in here. See, by not overmixing, all these colors happen automatically. Beautiful little things. If you tried to sit here and plan all those, you'd have a devil of a time. When you do them accidentally, they just fall in there. Look at that. But we never, we never admit this was an accident. If somebody asked, well, we planned this son of a gun right from the beginning. I watch a lot of people when they first start selling paintings and they, people will say, you know, you wanna sell that painting? They say, yeah, yeah, I wanna sell that painting, but there's a couple little errors in it. You know, this tree's wrong or those mountains are wrong. You, you, wouldn't, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't buy somebody else's mistakes. Nobody's gonna buy yours. If they didn't like the painting, they wouldn't ask you. And maybe the thing in that painting that troubles you the most is what makes them the happiest. So don't ruin their illusion. Here I'm using a little of that shadow color and just bringing it down. I'm gonna take the small knife and go right into some very dark color. I wanna increase the intensity of some of these shadows back here. Look at that. This little knife gets into some places that you might find a little difficult with a big knife. There, it just slips right in. Look at there, maybe there's a little more shadow right in there. There might even be the tiniest little bit of light that hits. Oh, look at that. Mm. Look at that, that easy. You bring it around, look at there. 
create all kinds of beautiful little effects. Just, just letting a knife just graze it, graze it, graze it, graze it. I want it to sort of slope out. Little lights singing through there and hitting. Take a dry brush. Be sure these brushes are dry when you do this. If they're wet, you're gonna watch your painting just, just rip off your canvas. Then you're gonna be mad at me. And I want you to be happy with your paintings and happy with us. Okay, now we can play a little more. I'll take a little more of that yellow ochre and some bright red and some sienna. We'll just mix all this together. Put a little white in there. Once again, don't over mix it. Let's see, there. Now, you have to start making some decisions. Where does this live? There it comes. Look at, look at what happens there because you did not over mix that paint. It comes down, there it is. We'll just let it go, let it go, let it go. Like that, let it go. Wherever, wherever. Wherever. I'm gonna take and touch a little bit of the same color with more white in it just to sparkle it up. Just so a little light is, a little light just playing through here. And zing, it hits and it bangs and plays. There's one right there. That's some of these little light things happen. Okay, going back to my little knife. And back behind here, we need a shadow. Look at that. See, that makes that a separate entity. Just by putting a shadow behind it. Just like that. And we can come down in here and we can raise parts out. Look, right there. It's by putting a little dark area and changing the angle. Angles are very important when you're doing mountains. Very, very important. Okay. I'm gonna take and go into the tiniest little bit of cad yellow with that big brush. Just tap the bristles in there, okay? Maybe right up here there's a, look at here. Little grass that grows right up the side of that mountain. Just wherever. Just let it sort of blend together and have fun. There. All the little effects. Just let your brush work. Let it go. You can put the least little touch of sap green here and there. Oh, look at that. See how it separates? Brings those apart. Looks like a whole separate entity. Just that easy. That easy. Tell you what, maybe I'm just gonna throw some dark in here and watch. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Go back to the same old brush. And I'm gonna take some of that dark color. Look at there. Look at there. And we'll just begin bringing all this together. You could make a multitude of things happen just by using the brush. Let all these little things just live in here and play. Take off some of that excess paint. Soften that right up like that. Alrighty, alrighty. Now with a clean brush, we can soften that even a little more and create the illusion of mist in it. Okay, I think that gives you a general idea of how to make a fantastic little mountain. I'm gonna go in here and and drop in a few little background trees. We'll just use some black and some blue, pick up some white, and a little brown. What the heck, what the heck? There we go, okay, let's go right up here. Maybe there's some happy little trees that live right here, right there. Let them go, let them go, wherever you want them. You can just make as many trees in your world as you want. We'll stop them right there. That's enough. That's enough right there. Now with a good dry brush, I want to just tap this. Just want to tap it. That softens it all up. Lift upward. Very lightly. Just blend it out. That gives us a nice little layer of some background trees. Let's go 
we use the old round brush. I'm going still into the black. Add a little sap green to it, a little brown. Okay, let's go up here. Maybe there's a happy little tree. And he lives right there. A whole bunch of little trees. Just tapping these in. And I'm using a darker color here so it stands out against the other color. And when we put a few highlights on it, that'll show too. We'll just drop some down here. That'll be reflections. Right into a little bit of the yellow, the yellow ochre. And then you can put, look at there, a few little highlights. These trees are closer. You're beginning to see some highlights in them. Just tap them on very lightly. Don't overdo, don't overdo. Just a few. Put a few in layers. Look at there. Isn't that easy, that easy. You got some nice little background trees. Okay, we'll take a two inch brush, grab it, and pull down. Look at there. That quick you got some beautiful little reflections. That may be one of the nicest things that happens in this technique is reflections. You just pull it down very lightly, go across, and you have instant, instant reflections. Take a little of the liquid white. To that add a little of the blue. It's very thin paint. Cut across it. Let's go up here. That then will give us some water lines back here in these little trees. Helps create the illusion of depth. It shows different planes again. Take the point of the knife, knock in a few little sticks and twigs, just like so. Okay, I'm going back to the same old round brush, go back into some brown and green and black. And maybe right here, yeah. You're right, there lives a nice little happy tree. And he comes right down like that. Just think, think like a tree when you do these. Maybe right on back through here. Like so, maybe there's a big son of a gun there. Go into a little bit of the dark sienna and add that right in there. This just be a little background. Drop it in. There. There we go, that quick. Okay, tell you what, let's do the same thing right over here. Maybe there's a happy little thing right there. And this sort of this sort of helps helps with the composition. It brings some borders around the edge, makes the painting look a little better, pushes everything farther back. And there we go. Just like so. Some nice warm tones in here. Okay, now then, let's take the old fan brush here. We'll put in a few basic little tree trunks. We'll just use some brown, just a little bit of brown. There we go, let's go up here. Maybe there's a happy little tree trunk in there. Right in there, there's one. Just some indications. We're not looking for a lot of detail right now. Just here and there, drop them in. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a one inch brush. We'll dip it into a little bit of the liquid white. Let's go into some yellows, some greens, a little yellow ochre. Just mix them on the brush, okay? Let's go up here. Let's begin popping in. Just some nice little highlights on some of these little trees here. That easy, okay. Add a little Bright red to that. Look at there. Mm. All kinds of beautiful little effects. And do this in layers, so it creates creates all kinds of depth in there. Now, happy little reflection right there. Right there. Go across, and we got that rascal. Let's put a few on the other side. There he is. Right there. Here we're just using the brush sidewards. Just bend them right out. There. Okay. Now let's, let's have a few little stones down here. We'll take a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown. Let me clean off my knife. Come right down here. 
There we go. There's a little stone right there. Maybe there's some over here, too. Can't ever tell. I'll just pull a little bit of that down. It'll end up being reflections, like so. Dry it out like that, wherever you want. Maybe, tell you what, there's a little stone out in the water. There's another one. Maybe we'll just have a bunch of them out here in the water. Just drag them across, like that. Take an old big brush. Let's bring this right on down. This is just brown and green. It's just a nice dark color. Right on down my cat. Hmm. Well, we're getting crazy here. I don't know what's going to happen. We'll use a little bit of this brown and white. Just put a little highlight here and there on some of these little stones. These little stones out here need some highlight on them too. Just let it bounce around and play. Just like so. Now you know me. I always like to have a little cabin. Let's build us a little cabin right about here. Just a little one. There he comes. Look at that little rascal. That easy. Well, I wish it was really that easy to build a little cabin out in the woods. Look at there. And we'll take some brown and some white. We'll put a few little highlights on his front of him here, like that. Take the knife, cut through, make it look like some old slabs. A little bit of brown, give him a door. Can I have a door? A little touch of white around the door so it stands out. Now let's take, we'll use a little bit of red and brown mixed together. Put some red on his roof here, go boop, 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 do, 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 do. Just let that fall right off your knife. See there? Easy way to make a quick little indication of a happy little roof. Put a little light color here to make him stand out. Now then, a little bit of yellow. We can pop in a few happy little bushes around his foots. And over here, let's do this side. Over here, here's a nice little bush. Look at that. Just let these little rascals Layer after layer after layer. This layering effect, though, once again, I know you're tired of hearing me say it, but this layering effect is what creates the depth in your painting. Let's have some fun. Let's put, let's put a few big old trees in there. I'm going to go right into the Van Dyke Brown and the Sienna. Just mix them together. Make a decision. I think there's a tree that lives right there. Big tree. And he's got a friend there. There he is. Let's go on the other side. Maybe over here, there's really some big trees. And I'm gonna get a letter. Sure as a devil says, why did you mess up that painting with all those trees? There we go, there's another big tree. And one right there, however many trees you want. You just drop them in. Just drop them in. And we'll take a little bit of the liquid black, liner brush with some thinner on it, Let's drop in a few indications of some happy little limbs here and there. Just a few. And when you're doing this at home, you put as many in as you want. I just want to show you how to do it. There we go. Just however many. A few in these over here. Don't want them to be left out. take a little of the liquid white and highlight a few of them, just wherever. Okay, I want to take a little bit of the, little bit of highlight color and just make these stand out, just barely touching, give it a little pull. See, just barely touch, pull it. Look at that, make the little trees just stand right out. And just Think of which side the light would hit. There you go. Little bit, little bit right over here. Don't want this tree to get lonely. If you leave him out, he'll get upset. We don't like unhappy trees in our paintings. All right, 
Tell you what. Tell you what. We got just about enough time left to play around here and we'll put a few little happy leaves there. I'll take a little cad yellow, little sap green, and I'm just just tapping that brush right into it. Okay, let's go right up here. Now then, just think about where the leaves would be. See? Just tap them in. Keep a lot of paint on your brush. A lot of paint. Leave them loose and very airy. Hope that's a proper word, airy. Sounds good anyway, you know what I mean. Sometimes I'm bad about making up words, so don't pay any attention. And if you're young and still going to school, don't tell your English teacher. <laughs> She'll be writing me bad letters, too. But see how you can make the indication of thousands of little leaves that quick? Let's do this over here. Look, just tap. Think of the basic shapes, though, you want here. Don't just hit them in at random. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, I get excited when I see these things. Maybe that's the reason I continue to paint. It's one of the few things that you paint for a million years. You always know the next painting you do is going to be a little bit better. You're going to learn a little more. Like that. All right. I think we can take a one-inch brush here with a little paint on it. Let's go right down here at his foot. And let's put some happy little things right there at his foot. Okay, I'm just about out of time. So I'm going to take a little bit of color here. Put a little bit of water line right around here. Just a tiny bit. Pull this down. And I'd like to thank you for being with us today. I hope you've enjoyed this one. And I look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, from all of us here, happy painting.